Here we go. <laughs> Some of you are not about to like this video. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is when you watch this video, just make it apply. Uh, Spirit is coming out with a strong message. I was actually just trying to pray and everything today. I wasn't really trying to do, uh, I was going to do a reading today, but just not this morning. And Spirit is just like urging me um, in my prayers, you know, telling me to tell you guys to stop putting off to st what what would what, what was the exact wording S stop putting stop putting off things that you know you can do today dealt with the measure stop putting stop putting things off that you know you can do today spirit is giving a warning to a procrastinator Spirit is giving a powerful warning to a procrastinator. That's what this message is about to be about. Spirit is giving a powerful warning. One of the ways that the um, Orishas speak to me, as well as the ancestors, so all of them, you know, Igun, Spirit God, ancestors, Sarabanda, Orisha, Yeshua, Oladumare, Olaruma, Olafi, is they bring up painted keys. And it's because I know a lot of painted keys. I've read books after books after books, learning the sacred stories of the Orishas. The painted keys is just like the parables in the Bible, where it's stories that highlights, you know, um, the Orishas characteristics, how the Orishas respond to things. That you can get a lot of stuff from the painted keys, but the painted keys is is just like the parables. In the Bible, how you can learn powerful lessons from the parable. But the Painted Keys is not the Bible. You know, the Bible would be um, the Odu Ifa. The Odu Ifa would be comparable to what the Bible is. The Odu Ifa is the actual, you know, holy text. But the Painted Keys is all of the sacred stories. You can learn a lot from both the Painted Keys as well as the Odu Ifa. Um, as you guys know, for in case this is your first time watching me, um, I am an Orisha priest, crowned Oya. Um, so I am uh, crowned Oya. Chango is my daddy. <laughs> Oya is, is big mama. <laughs> but um, spirit is talking about a uh, um, procrastinator. You know, spirit is saying that there is somebody under heavy witchcraft did i say my spiel good morning good afternoon good evening whatever it is when you watch this video just make it apply this is a general message so it's not gonna uh resonate with everyone divination is confirmation so if i'm telling you something that your spiritual team haven't told you already do not listen to me your spiritual team will be the first one to tell you anything this is how you can move away people in your life that are manipulators that are deceivers, that are tricksters. You are such a powerful being. Why would spirit bypass you and talk to someone else first? No, sir. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. No baloney, no ham. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> spirit will tell you first. It is your life. It is your journey. It is your blessing or your consequence. So spirit will always tell you first. And it's when you ignore the message. It's when you fail to decode the message. It's when you receive the message, but still going in the same direction. Now it's time for confirmation on top of confirmation on top of confirmation on top of confirmation. You know, some people think it's a flex whenever they get a lot of confirmation and they like God speak to me God speak to me you hear me God speak to me when when God tell me to do something God gotta tell me eight times <laughs> that's not a flex the more that God have to speak to you it's the more hard headed you are you know, some people think that the more confirmation that they get 
it's just like, oh, you know, God is just really in love with me. No, the more God got to tell you, the more God got to warn you, it, it speaks of how hard headed you are. You know, keep getting all of these confirmations is not a flex. This is not, oh man, God is tight. I got a good relationship with God. This is a hard headed person. This is a lazy person. This is a person that refused to do what they need to do. That when you do not listen to the voice of spirit, when it cannot be given to you internally by having an inner knowingness, by allowing the ashe inside of you to give you so many messages and so many downloads, that's when it must be given to you from the external. And the more people that must confirm what it is, that means it, it, it's not a flex. That means your heart is as fuck. If it is a message that things are going to change, things are going to change, things are going to change, and spirit got to remind you 20 times, that means you are more receptive to depression. That means you are more receptive to, um, you're, you're, you're more re uh, receptive to disbelief. And so spirit must keep reminding you over and over and over, it's going to come. It's right around the corner. It's almost here. One step, two step, three steps, four. <laughs> Backwards slide and do some more. <laughs> that is not, that is not a flex. <laughs> the more that spirit must reveal things to you, it means you are more receptive for falling apart, breaking down, imploding or exploding, and not believing him at his word. This is someone with trust issues. But at the end of the day, God is still good. You know, regardless of our condition, God is still willing to work with us. But there are certain things that is outside of God's control because it's a matter of time. This is a message for a procrastinator and spirit is saying that your time is very limited and I have warned you enough. Pretty soon the consequence is getting ready to come, even though this is something you don't deserve. When you look at the Orishas, let's take um, Ochosi, for example, even though the uh, painter key we're going to be talking about today is Arumula is the great diviner, the great prophet, the whole religion for the entire religion. Arumula is Ifa. He's the great prophet. He's the Orisha of wisdom, guidance. And so Ochosi is the great hunter. This is Ogun's um, brother. He's known for his precision. He's over law enforcement. Well, I won't get into one with this one, but if, if you know the story, you know the story because I don't want to get I don't want to get you too overwhelmed with too many painted keys. I mean, even though we need to be studying, we need to be studying to show ourselves approved. You know, I, I be hearing some people talk about the Orishas and I'm like, that's not Orisha. Like when when are you going to study, you know, and stop hearing things from word of mouth? Like it's, it's time to start really learning and getting that relationship for yourself. But um. Every, almost every last one of the Orishas had to go through something significant in order for them to be crowned with something. Someone is going through a lot of stuff and you're going through a lot of negative witchcraft. And the reason why spirit has allowed it, the reason why spirit has allowed that witchcraft to come into your life is because this lesson is getting ready to turn into your crown. You are getting ready to ascend. You are getting ready to have dominion over whatever it is that you're going through. And this is the reason why spirit has allowed you to go through this. When we look at the story of Ochosi, it started as a simple task that Oladumare asked Ochosi to go find a rare and exotic bird. 
Ochosi found it with ease. He was not a procrastinator and he found it fast. But eventually he had to find it twice because someone else ended up taking the bird and cooking it. We'll get into this painter key for another day. I mainly want to get about his crown. And so when he finally presented to bird the, the bird, the Oladumare, Oladumare said, what do you want from me? Whatever it is that you want, I will, you know, I will do for you. And he said, it was hard. Goodness, I had to get this thing twice because somebody stole the bird from me. So whoever stole the bird, I want you to shoot your arrow and let it pierce them. Oladumare said, are you sure? You want me to um do that because you never know who finna get this. And um, Ochozi said, no, shoot that arrow, shoot that damn arrow. I'll tell you later in another story when I really go over that painter key, who it is that Ola Dumere shot, if you already don't know the story. So I'm giving you a little suspense. <laughs> but um, the main thing is that after this situation, Ochozi was now seen as one of the Orishas of Justice, which Chango and Obatala is also Justice. You know, um, three completely different deities. Ochosi, when he, with his justice, if you call on him, you better be right. Because if you call on Ochosi in order to look at a situation to give you justice, he will shoot that arrow at you if you're in the wrong. So Ochosi is only to be called on if you know that you are in the 100% right. Chango is quick justice. And let's be real. Chango really don't care if you're in the right or wrong. <laughs> I mean, he cares. He cares. But not like Ochozi. You know what I'm saying? You know, Chango find out you kind of messed up in this a little bit. Like, you you slapped a hoe, <laughs> punched her, and put her in the closet. Och uh, Chango is going to look at the overall general thing and be like, okay, well, you know, hey, she did start it. <laughs> So Chango is, but Chango is very swift. Chango, if you need something fast, it will definitely be the energy of Chango. And then Obatala is the justice of going through the courts. Anything that is that slow justice, insurance claim, EEOC, you know, all these things are going through court proceedings and stuff like that. That is Ochosi. I mean, there's Obatala, Obatala, ooh. I hope I just didn't mess up and say Ochozi on that. Um, but again, I, cause I kind of, I'm Obatala. That's Obatala. The beautiful one in white. The Sky Father. Obatala is when it comes to law. When it comes to like the court system. But Ochozi had to go through all of that in order to be crowned and to be ascended to one of the Orishas of Justice. Someone is going through a lot of stuff and it's because you're ready to get, you're, you're about to get dominion and power over a certain area. But in order for you to get there, in order for you to get there, there is a test that you must first pass. And so far, you're not doing what you're supposed to do and you're procrastinating like crazy. We're going to get into the paint to key. And Spirit is saying that this painted key is going to resonate with the person that um, that I'm talking about, that Spirit is talking about. Because Spirit is saying that it is someone out there that you're under so much heavy witchcraft that you feel like a, you feel, okay, I'm, I'm going to go, okay, calm down. I'm going to go each, each one that Spirit is telling me. I'm like, calm down. Don't overload me because I'll forget <laughs> spirit is okay so the first one is spirit the, the first one spirit is saying that there is a there is there is a hurt and it's in the middle of the chest it's on the middle of the chest it starts in the middle of the chest and then it eventually go down right here to the side of the left chest where it start being a sharp pain right here but it starts in the middle of the chest 
And spirit is saying every once in a while, like when you when you get up, it feels as if like your chest is ripping apart. Spirit is like like you just like you can pop your um your fingers. Spirit is saying that somebody like you like the middle of your chest, like every like you feel it. Like, you know, like opening and expanding and crackling. Like someone is just taking something and just ripping it. That you feel that energy. And when it happens, that's when you start getting pain on the side of the chest. And the same person is getting pain in the shoulder areas as well. It, it, it feels as if like it's something wrong with your rotator cuff and you have been probably like going to the doctor trying to get this checked out and they like you crazy It's nothing wrong with your rotator cuff. It's a lot of pain in this area that some days is getting so bad that it's like you can barely lift your hands and it's the same thing. With the shoulder spirit is saying that every once in a while you hear that crackling like is bone rubbing against bone. Like things are being is being removed out of that area. No fluid or anything. Um, and then last but not least, spirit is saying that um, this person is having problems with breathing. This person is having problems with breathing. And it's as if you're being choked, but you don't see it as being choked. You think it's a blockage somewhere here in the middle. This person is really key in the middle. This is this is not a pain where it's like the top of the chest and stuff like that. This is the middle. This is the middle of the chest that this person is having a lot of problems where it feels like you feel that it's some block, but it's really you being choked. Spirit is saying, if you resonate with this, I'm just going to tell you the truth of what spirit is saying. Somebody is using a fucking voodoo doll on you. That ripping, that popping that you hear in the middle of your chest. That's what spirit is saying that this, these people are literally ripping you apart. That you, you know, that by now you should have been taken out. You really should have been taken out by now. But spirit is protecting you, giving you enough time to go break this curse. Spirit said that he purposely intervened, divine intervention, and sent somebody your way that you would, uh, that you would receive. Spirit said that when you seen this person, you instantly... It was divine intervention and you know it was divine intervention of how you met this person. And spirit is saying the, the clock is ticking. This is the person that they brought into your life in order to break the curse that you are going through. You are keep thinking that it is a flex that it's like, I'm not dead now. They haven't taken me out in the name of Jesus. I ain't going nowhere. And God is like, no, they have not taken you out because you are covered and you are blessed right now. But you are only covered and blessed because I'm giving you enough time to go do what you need to do in order to break this curse. And so it's like right now, while they are using your energy to siphon your energy into a voodoo doll and bring you pain in the chest area where this person, they are literally, it's like... Spirit is saying like they are taking that voodoo doll and just really keep stabbing the middle of the chest and, and like pounding it, stumping on it. And you just keep feeling all of this pain in the middle of the chest In the middle of the chest. You keep feeling it and like you keep. And the, the, the crazy thing is because it's not normal. It, you keep hearing like that crackling in the middle of, of your chest as if your chest is breaking apart. As if your chest is coming apart. That is voodoo. That is a voodoo doll. You know, and the spirit is like, they are day in and day out. Keep doing this thing. But if you are not getting ready to break this curse pretty soon, it's going to end up overtaking you. Spirit said that they are literally taking this doll, choking you. That every, all throughout the day. And this is a key indicator. 
This is the key indicator of who spirit is um, talking about. Spirit is saying that earlier in the day, like yesterday or last week, there was like you became overwhelmingly hot for no reason. That like you were in a room with AC, there's no reason for you to have been hot and you could have felt on your left side just a, uh, it, it was like a rush of heat. It was a rush of heat as if the heater was on or if you were by a fire. Spirit said that that is the sign that you know that I'm talking to you. That you are the one. I mean, all the other signs are pretty evident. But Spirit is saying, that's how you know. That there was like a, you could feel heat on your back. You could feel that heat on your back. But there's a, a crackling in the chest. There's crackling and stuff in the shoulder area. Some days you're so sore you can barely lift it up. And it feels like something is wrong with your rotator cuff. And lo and behold, nope, just magic. They just hidden away on that voodoo doll. And those are the areas that is keep hitting. It's hitting your shoulder, the middle of your chest, and your throat. Because it's like they're choking that doll. And every time they do that, you are having a problem with breathing. You keep having breathing problems throughout the day. And it's wrong. These people are wicked. But at the end of the day, Spirit is saying to you, that you have fallen this too because you should have been broken this curse. Spirit is saying that this is someone that know that they are under a curse and you haven't done anything. We haven't even, damn, already 21 minutes in and we haven't even gotten the actual reading. We still haven't even gotten to the painted key. But hey, this is the channel message. You know, not always am I in the cards. You know, at the end of the day, I'm an empath. At the end of the day, I am an empath and I know how to talk to my spirits. You know, um, I receive those downloads. When those downloads come in, uh, to me, they're more important than the cards. So one of the um, names that's mentioned in the, um, one of the names that's mentioned in the uh, Paint to Key is called uh, AD, uh, AD, Bio, AD Bio, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, that's not a real person. You know, that's just, you know, sometimes in the Painter Keys, um, characters is used as fictional um, characters and it's only to create an illusion uh, at, or to create an illustration um, to the moral of the story, to the moral of the lesson. And so normally when there is like a character like this, is that, uh, that A.D. Bio is that you insert yourself in there, but everything else is actual, like Arumula. Arumula is an actual deity. So, the painter key. Once upon a time in the land of Arisha, there was a young man named A.D. Bio who sought the wisdom of Arumula, the Arisha of wisdom, knowledge, and divination. A.D. Bio had a habit of putting off important tasks, thinking he could always do them later. Arumula, aware of A.D. Bayo's procrastination, decided to teach him a lesson. He gave A.D. Bayo a simple task. Go to the forest and collect herbs before sunset. The herbs will protect your village from impending, from an impending plague. Don't it sound familiar? Because this is what spirit is keep warning you of. Spirit is keep telling you, break the curse, break the curse, break the curse. But because it hasn't affected you yet, because your spiritual team is taking the hit, until you break this curse, you're thinking, Okay, nobody touch me. See, when I call on the name of Jesus, when, when I call on the name, when I call on the name, ain't nothing gonna fuck with me, homie. And it's like, say that flex. That's not what this is. 
your spiritual team is absorbing that hit <laughs> until you do what the fuck you need to do and break this goddamn curse. Because after a while, spirit is going to say, you know what? Clearly, you're not interested in listening to my wisdom and listening to my guidance. And I'm just about to let this thing loose. And DNC, you flex. A.B. Bio, confident in his ability to complete the task, decided to take a nap first. He thought, I have plenty of time. When he finally woke up, he found himself distracted by other less important tasks and socializing with friends. As the sun began to set, A.D. Bio rushed to the forest. In the fading light, he struggled to find the correct herbs. By the time he gathered what he thought were the right herbs, it was too late. Number one, it was too late and you got the grown damn herbs. The plague had already started to spread in his valley. Adi Bayo returned to Arumula, ashamed and remorseful. Arumula looked at him and said, Procrastination has its own price. Adi Bayo by pushing off important tasks, you have endangered your entire village. Let this be a lesson to always act promptly when faced with critical responsibility. Adibayo learned from his mistake and became known for his diligence and promptness, helping his village to thrive and avoid further disasters. It's funny because when you look up the name, I think I'm pronouncing it right, um, the A.D. Bio, it means the crown meets joy. And it also means the king brings joy. But the one that I want to focus on is the crown meets joy. The crown is your head. The crown is owned by Obatala. And it's crazy how majority of the time in our lives, in order for the crown to meet joy, we have to go through something like this. Instead of seeing the pending danger and saying, you know what, I'm, I'm about to get up and cleanse. I'm about to find me a priest to do this ritual. You know what? I'm, I'm about to go and get this ceremony done. We sit there. We allow it to affect, uh, affect us. Knowing that when we have witchcraft on us, it affects everything in our energy. Now it's affecting our kids' life. Now it's affecting all of these people that is connected to our energy. And then once everything fall, now we say, oh, I think I need to cleanse myself. I think I need to strip myself of this witchcraft and do a ritual. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> I, a, a lot of times, you know, and I'm, you know, I, a lot of times I work with people and I'm just like, so you waited. To the witchcraft took your job, your house, your beauty, your teeth, <laughs> gave you critical health problems. So you waited for the witchcraft to take all of this, took the love out of your life and everything before you finally got up and did anything. Baby, I'm sorry. You got you got me at the first plague. <laughs> Me losing a job is a big sign because, you know, one of the things that follow me is the spirit of luck. I have never had a problem with finding a job. When I was a kid, I just used to have to pop up at one of these fast food restaurants and they like, okay, you got a job. I've never had a problem with money. Money has always flown to me. And so because I know that the spirit of luck follows me, 
when money is leaving my life, I automatically go into the mindset of this is a curse. This is somebody doing magic because this is not normal for me. No love on the other hand, love has always been a fucking challenge. So you take, you do magic to take my love away. I might not see it as a curse because I'm going to be like, you know what? This shit has always been my lot. <laughs> I have never, ever been good in love like that. I have never been good at just love just coming up out of the blue. It, it haven't been my blessing. I'm not saying that I don't want to receive it, but love has never been my blessing like that. I've always had some crazy situations where I'm like, what the fuck did I do in the, uh, in the previous lives that I'm getting served this shit in this one? <laughs> I said, God damn. <laughs> but money, money comes to me. Money comes to me. I, I remember all the times that I was prophesied that it was like, you know, large amounts of money is going to come flowing through your hands and stuff like that. And it has happened all throughout my life. Even when I was a kid, my dad had his own um, landscaping business and sweet master business. And yes, my dad, boy, he made us work. He put us out on those parking lot. The sweet master business is those big trucks. Just like a vacuum and they sweep up all the trash. My dad had me out there in kindergarten. I have literally been working ever since I've been in kindergarten. My dad will be in that truck driving, sweeping up all of the trash and everything that the um, vacuum couldn't pick up. Guess who was out there? Me and my brothers. <laughs> and, you know, for, for good reason, you know, um, especially a black male, you we need to teach our kids, you know. And, you know, I was out there with my brothers and stuff like that. So, you know, I, would re I was really having fun. You know, I really didn't even see it at work. You know, my dad had us to have our gloves on. I had my little bucket just running around the parking lot picking up everything. <laughs> just, be, just being a little kid, running around picking up everything. And, you know, my dad had to do what he had to do. You know, it was 16 of us. And, no, before y'all start thinking that, you know, ah, oh, there go those black kids. No. You know, it's, yes, it's 16 of us all from the same mother and father. My mother and father has been knowing each other ever since um, junior high. So, yes, you know, and now they are 62. Um, so, so, yes, it's 16 of us all from the same mother and father. It is not multiple men. It is not multiple women. It is 16 of us from the same mother and father. So, let's not start. <laughs> but, um... My dad, you know, my dad didn't play any games. You know, he taught us, you know, very strong, very strong work ethics. He didn't, he didn't play no games and money has always, I remember being on those lots. I was always the lucky one that, you know, I would find, you know, somebody got drunk and dropped all their money. I'm finding $600. You know, and as a kid, I'm, I'm like, I'm rich. <laughs> as a kid, I'm like, you can't tell me none, baby. No, I got, you got $600? Well, nigga, I do. <laughs> See, you couldn't tell me none as a kid with that 600 But I would always find money that it even got to the point that my brothers were just like, you know, Follow him because he's going to end up finding the money on the lot. It's treasure on these lots. <laughs> but they knew I always had luck. I always had the strongest luck when it comes to money. You know, it's, it's, no, um, it's no coincidence that, you know, um, I am the highest paid out of everyone in my family. I have... I have the job that I'm getting paid the most, you know, for whatever reason, luck has always followed me. And so the more you learn about yourself, it's so easy to know when someone is doing witchcraft against you. And that's why that's what I'm saying. I'm telling you this long drawn out story <laughs> because if someone plays with my love, I might not notice that shit until like. I might not never. I'm like, you know, the first thing I'm going to say 
is I've always had problems in love. I never thought that I was going to get married or anything like that because love has always been um, a, a very difficult situation for me. But money? <laughs> oh, no. Nah. Who doing? Who? Money slowing up. Who, who the fuck? Who the fuck dare challenge me? <laughs> who done challenged me? Somebody need to stop procrastinating. Procrastination is about to have this witchcraft take you over. And, and spirit is like, how many times I got to tell you? How many times do I gotta um how many times do I gotta tell you before you before Woof Spirit ain't playing no fucking games Spirit ain't playing no fucking games Spirit said Tell these people to stop goddamn procrastinating I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to make that part of the the title to really get, you know, um, people's attention because that's the that's the message. And some of you are doing band aid approaches. Some of you are doing band aid approaches to this to what's going on in your life instead of, you know, like. Uh, Instead of, you know, doing what spirit is telling you to do, like spirit told you that, you know, like spirit is leading you, spirit is leading you to somebody and spirit is like, you know, let this person lead you, guide you, teach you, let this person strip you of this, you know, negative witchcraft and you just keep procrastinating, you keep procrastinating tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow come next Friday. Next Friday, next Friday, I, I promise, I got you next Friday. Baby. Next Friday come, and now it's, it's off the next month. Angel number 2121, it talks about uh, energy level. It's funny. 21 is the number of Ilegua as well as Sarabanda. You know, and um, my... Um, my Ilegua, um, Ileke, uh, Ileke bro, when those things break, you know, that's the one thing I love about those is it, it, it tells you a lesson. It gives you warning. The moment those things break, you need to immediately go into divination because it will tell you what is coming because when those break, that means the Ileke took the hit. That means that it, that Ileke, it absorbed the negative energy and stuff that people were sending to you. And with Ilegua being the one um, broken, Ilegua is the Orisha of doors and portals. That means someone was trying to open a door or portal. Ilegua is also the Orisha of communication, which means that someone could be doing something to affect communication. So 2121 is about energy levels. And it's saying um, that that day you're waiting for will come. Maintain discipline. You're getting closer to your end goal. There's no need to overextend yourself. Guard your energy to remain focused. It will pay off. Um, it's a it's a clown. It's a it's a climbing. It's it's a clown. Uh, so like like you're climbing up a ladder. Uh, not an elevator ride. Trust in you. Spirit is speaking. Somebody is just keep procrastinating. You keep saying tomorrow, 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 while your enemies are saying, bitch, today. <laughs> now, where did my other car go? And when did this, uh... <laughs> Oh. Uh. 
Some of y'all are keep saying, you know, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And your enemies is like, bitch, today. There's somebody from your past that's doing magic on you. And this is someone you know. With the Page of Wands and the Six of Cups, the Page of Wands is the witch. And the Page of Wands is always being represented as somebody you know. There's a page here that is doing magic on you, and this person is from your past. And you could have did like a cleanse. I want to say you did like a cleansing or some, but whatever magic you used, this, this wasn't what was needed in order to clear this magic because this magic is returning to you. And so let's say, you know, I'm, I'm keep telling you guys, there's like three levels to this. You have when magic is being sent to you, but it haven't made it to your home yet. You can do a powerful cleanse that it puts like a protection around you that as that magic comes, it can't enter now. Kind of like like my bracelets that um. The bracelets got to take the hit now. And normally when they take an overwhelmingly amount of, uh, of hits, they'll break. Sending you a message that, hey, somebody is doing witchcraft against you. I have tried to absorb as much as I can. But, you know, just know somebody is doing magic against you. You know, um, and so then you have it where the magic is home that is in home, that you're starting seeing things breaking and, you know, um, all these different things just happening in your life, then that's when a ritual need to be done to break that energy. And then now, since it's broken, it will remove from your home. And I would suggest after that, do a cleanse to protect yourself that it cannot return. And then you have a ceremony. A ceremony is once this thing has taken root. A ceremony is when the magic is so powerful that it's getting ready to turn into what this person manifested. Like, let's just say, like with this, this person is manifesting death because it talks about like the chest ripping apart, you know, things in, you know, um, this, when, when you have physical manifestation that you have scratches, you have bumps, you have marks, you have, you can feel, you know, like the chest ripping apart and all of this other stuff. Majority of time, all of those things require a ceremony that you can feel spirits in your home going up and down. And so spirits in your home is still on that level as a ritual. It's when the spirits are actually attacking you now that you can feel the spirits choking you and everything else. They're holding you down on the bed and all this other stuff. No, that shit is a ceremony. You're not at ritual stage no more. But the thing about it is spirit is saying that's on you because you allowed it. You know, some of you, your ancestors, it's like, you don't remember when I woke you up three times Time after time again, every single night, I woke you up and I was telling you, it's witchcraft here, it's witchcraft here, it's witchcraft here, what are you going to do? It's witchcraft here, it's right over there, get it up, remove it from this house, and you stayed there and you allowed that thing to grow. And now it's like, now we here. But what's getting ready to return is somebody is getting ready to play with your beauty. Somebody is once again getting ready to play with your beauty. They are getting ready to do um, beauty magic. They want to remove your beauty. This is someone that's jealous and envious of you. This is someone that's very good looking, someone that's sexy, that you're getting too much attention. And this person want to take that attention off of you. And so because of that, they're getting ready to do beauty spells to mess up your, um, to mess up your love life, to basically card at the bottom of the deck. They want to silence you. And they want to have dominion over you. Binding you to this lot 
of affecting your beauty or, 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 or silence you by affecting your beauty. That, you know, this person wants to make you so unrecognizable that you're going to end up being frozen and shocked. And, you know, you could end up being going into um, a mode of imploding where you don't want to go outside no more. You don't want to go to work. And you like, oh, I can't let nobody see me like this. You know, um, they're getting ready to start back doing um, magic against your beauty. <coughs> you have as the, uh, the, the, uh, the crossing um, energy. You have the um, Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is this person is trying to imprison you. And this person is trying to imprison you by the Six of Pentacles. They want to take all good things from out of your life. They don't want nobody giving to you. And this person is just waiting. This person is waiting and watching. They have done so much witchcraft on you. They are waiting and watching for this magic to take root. That is going to put you in a season of begging. That you're going to end up getting on your knees begging for scraps. Begging for somebody to help you pay your bills. Begging for somebody to help you to do the things that you need to do. But once again, why let this witchcraft keep getting stronger and stronger? We got to take responsibility for this stuff too. You seen that shit was here? You have it in your uh, uh, your your crowning energy, and and this is this is the problem. This is the problem. This is the problem. The five of uh, swords. The five of swords is. I mean, the five of wands in reverse. It talks about avoiding conflict, and you have it paired with the four of swords. And so this is the problem. This is why you're procrastinating. You, you don't want to deal with this. You don't want to deal with this. And you mainly don't want to deal with this because someone ended up getting a soulmate snatched away from them. Whoever I'm talking to, you end up getting a soulmate snatched away from you. And, you know, you got a soulmate snatched away from you. And then not only did they do that, the moment they took the soulmate from you, this bitch starts sending you all types of magic. They done sent magic to try to mess up your manifestations. And um, mainly, the, like the main thing in here is messing up your love and trying to imprison you. Because this is somebody, you know, spirit is like, uh, the one thing that I just heard the spirit put in my mind is that, you know, this is someone... That, you know, like the, the person that is envious of you is like, see, you think you know better than everybody. You think you know better than me, huh? But now look at your ass, ugly as fuck. This person, this, this is why. This person want to affect your beauty and imprison you. And then they're going to be like, I told you, I told you she was crazy, girl. I told you she was crazy. No, she crazy because you did that juju. And this, um, this baby didn't know how to break this curse and refuse to work with the people that spirit has divinely put in your life. But you keep avoiding conflict. You keep retreating with the four of swords. I don't want to deal with it. And then some of you, this is the energy too, what spirit was telling me. Some of you procrastinate in a righteous way. That you, the blood of Jesus over this situation. And I'm not going to do shit else. And it's like, that's not how that work. That's not how that work. We can't just say the blood of Jesus to do the lazy man approach and now we're like, oh no, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna deal with that shit. I'll put it in Jesus' hand. Okay. Let, let me know. Let me know how that works out for you. Let me know. As, as this magic keeps destroying you, let me know how that works out for you. Am I saying 
that Jesus can't fix it. No, I'm not saying that. But there's work that needs to be done. You know, when you look at the Old Testament, look at the things, the work that they put in in order to rid themselves of negative energy. But some of y'all, it's this illusion of this New Testament. Oh, I'm not going to do anything. It's the blood of Jesus, honey. I'm just going to let this magic overtake me. And I'm just going to be believing in the promise. Keep believing in the promise as you just go more, closer and closer to the grave. Because, and I only say that because this is death magic. It, it feels like death magic that somebody is sending, especially with playing in the heart area. Playing in the heart area, bringing, you know, uh, someone that's having a lot of muscle spasms. You have people that is having panic attacks and um, people that's having problems with breathing. You have in a challenge position, you have the temperance card and you have it paired with the, um, and you have it, you, you have it paired with the, uh, with the 10 of cups. This is, um, uh, just like, you know, this says someone is being, um, in, imprisoned, you know, um, and you know, it's saying that not only are they being imprisoned, but it's imprisoned them to get them to this begging state where it's like, please give me a cup of water. <laughs> Just like that, where it's like, you know, the, the two people that's begging like that, you know, and it's two people, which means they spelled both of these soulmates, both of these soulmates are spelled. They attacking both of those motherfuckers. They said, Get, give me the masculine and the feminine. <laughs> I don't want just one. <laughs> Bring me both those niggas. <laughs> they spelled both of y'all. You know, and it's not funny. It's not funny. It's really not funny. It's really sad. But with one of you that um, that this person um, is doing this to, notice how on the temperance card, look at that water. Look at that water going from cup to cup. Y'all see that? That water going from cup to cup, that's a potion. Someone is drinking. Someone is drinking something that a witch made and i know the witches are like why you gotta always say witches okay warlock <laughs> voodoo priestess <laughs> voodoo priestess <laughs> it don't matter who it is somebody is doing some magic <laughs> someone is doing magic and they're doing it that they're putting it in your drink they're putting it in your food this person is mixing making sure that they have everything in there that they can get you to this state of imprisoning you that you're going to be eating from the palm of their hand and they're just watching and waiting for this magic to take root so that they can take you out this person is being very strategic they're playing the long game they're playing the long game because this person they're they're already messing with your food and they're messing with your food in hopes that this will change the destiny of your Ten of Cups. They said, I want to be that Ten of Cups. Shit, let me, they don't already bring in beauty magic on your partner. And this person is very strategic. They, they are playing the long game because they want you to go through a strong breaking point that you're going to end up giving up that you're gonna end up imploding and not exploding, that you're gonna end up having like a mental breakdown. This person want you with a mental breakdown? And, you know, Spirit is saying that, you know, some of you may be very um, easily agitated and uh, frustrated. Spirit is saying you can't be that way right now because they're purposely sending you magic and the moment you get irritated and agitated and you do some, they like, told you she was crazy. Look at her. Like an animal in a cage. <laughs> like an animal in a cage. <laughs> That's exactly that they're purposely doing some. You're dealing with a narcissist. You're dealing with someone that is a strong narcissist that 
they know how to play this game, that they do stuff to you and hide their hand. And then the moment that you react, they like, didn't I tell you, um, I'm not going to say nothing. Just watch this video. Look what's on Facebook. <laughs> this person is playing you and you're giving, you're giving right into it. That this person is just like, yeah, I told you this was an unfit mother. I'm, I'm just, I just feel for those kids. And, and they, they got to justify their behavior. This, this person got to justify their behavior. And because this person is asking questions and now they have to justify their behavior. And now they're, you know, spirit is saying, they saying like, see, this is why I call DCS on their, on their kids. Because look at her. She's, she's unstable. Look how she break down. Aren't you on my side now? Girl, look, you don't sit your ass down. All it is that you are doing in darkness is going to eventually come to the light. You can't hide your hand forever. You know, uh, people say all the time, people ask me, oh, can you see someone that is masking themselves in divination and stuff like that? Baby, you can hide from humans. You cannot hide from the deities. You cannot hide from the deities. You cannot hide from the deities and divination and when they want to give you karma, you can't hide. Uh, the Bible said, where can I go? Where can I flee? Where can I go where you will not be? On the wings of a dove? <laughs> Come on now, where can I go? There is nowhere you can hide. And that's, that's a song by Trinity 5-7. I like that song. You needed me together deep inside my mother womb. I like this song. Where can I go? Where can I flee? Where can I go where you will not be? On the wings of a dove all over the sea. Even there you will find me. Lord, find me. I like the song. That's a, that was a, a really powerful song from Trinity 5-7. But um, you can't mask yourself from a deity, dummy. <laughs> oh, but when are we going to stop procrastinating? This is how it works when it comes to who you can trust when it comes to um, a priest, even when spirit is leading you to that person, it, it's not going to hurt to still give a little test. You know, um, but timing is of the essence for somebody. You know, you always, like with me, I'm, I'm an Orisha priest. I practice, you know, I do a lot of spell breaking and everything else. The thing that you would do is that you would sign up for a divination session if somebody is able and then when you sign up you don't say nothing don't talk let them tell you what's in your energy and the, if if they can tell you exactly what's in your energy and what's happening that's when you can start chiming in because now there's a sign that this person knows what they're doing they know what they are talking about. And so, yes, now you can assist me in breaking this. But if you can't see it in divination, no, if you, if you can't see it, if, if you can't see it, I'm not saying that you can't do the ritual, but if you can't see it, you're going to hit this thing blindly. Because now you're going to say, okay, well, if you really think witchcraft is on here, I mean, I can do a cleansing but a cleansing is not needed. A ritual is. Or you'll say, you know, I guess I can do a ritual, but a ritual is not needed. A ceremony is. And that's the importance of being able to see it in divination because I must be able to see this in order to recommend what the next steps need to be. But 
Derek getting ready to do beauty spells. Beauty spells is about to get, start back up. As I put it away, we'll do a, a, a quick recap. There's a witch here from your past that you know about that's getting ready to do some powerful magic on you. This person is returning magic to you and they're getting ready to affect your beauty. This person want you in a state of being imprisoned because they want you begging and eating from the palm of their hand. This person is watching and waiting for this magic to take root so that it will, so that they can trap you. Your state of procrastination is keep trying to avoid conflict and retreating from everything that comes your way. Just like this soulmate situation, there was a soulmate situation that you know was affected by magic and you still haven't done anything about it. The temperance, when you look close at that, someone is doing magic to mess with someone, foods and liquids. And they're purposely doing this to interfere and mess with someone's love life. This person is being very strategic because they want you to have a major breakdown. They want you to have a breaking point. And Spirit is saying they want it to be public. This is somebody that you're in the public light in some type of way. Um, people are watching you in some type of way. Or even if it's just a family maybe. That they're going to be... They're going to purposely keep getting you riled up. And then I'm going to film this crazy bitch. I told y'all she was crazy. I told y'all... I told y'all she wanted my life, but they didn't add the part of what they did. They didn't add that. They didn't add the part of the rocks that they have been throwing this entire time. No, no, no. They only want your reaction recorded. And right now you're playing into their hands. You're giving your enemies exactly what they want because the only thing they need right now is time, enough time for them to do their magic to make you completely break down and you're giving them all the time that they need because you're procrastinating.